We make the strings louder. Hi right, guys, so uh, here at the shop today, just kind of checking everything out because what are all those? Water bottles. All the water bottles. So anyhow, the shop is uh, the shop is a mess. You can see we got trash everywhere. We got I don't know. It's is a mess. Stuff's laying around. Shipping boxes everywhere. Car parts everywhere. Things laid laid on top of things. David's random paint. I got we got ten more gallons of primer for the Supra. So hopefully you guys are stoked for that. I quit. I quit the shop. Um, but anyhow, you can see any of you guys who uh, who provide waters at your place of whatever. Uh, I'm sure you guys know the struggle of of water bottles laying around. That's that's probably like the biggest issue we have here at the shop is all these water bottles. Because it's it's one of them things, you know, you you take a couple drinks out of it, you set it down, you're like, is that my water? I'm not gonna drink that water, I'm gonna go get a fresh water, and then there's more waters, and then you know, like look I don't know, spot the water bottles. Ty's been Ty's been picking them up for a couple minutes and there's still water bottles. Like look at this. Just random water bottles. Just every that one's been there for a couple months because yeah. yeah, this one's been there so for a couple like months. Look at look at the layer of dust on that. Can you believe that? But yeah, so I uh, I think we're gonna go ahead, get rid of some of these uh, shipping boxes that everything came in because it's trash day tomorrow and, uh, and the dumpster's not full yet. So we're gonna fill it up and then I might make me a boost leak tester. But, uh, but until then, hopefully you guys enjoy uh, enjoy the time lapse of cleaning the shop to some dope beats maybe. So be sure to get uh, get accustomed to these these two new tracks that I found on the internet. They're gonna be in my next like 20 to 30 videos, every single one. So hopefully you guys just go ahead and enjoy them. So if you guys like the song, don't go back and replay it or wear it out because I'll be sure to do that for you. So, yep. Yeah. Look at this little little thing of scrap metal. So this is all the stuff I cut off for the front, the water pump deal. Waters that people aren't gonna drink so that way you can have water for like for like welding or anything. You just have welding waters. Right. Or we, or we just pour them all out. No. Pour them all out. Because I'm pouring them all together to make like usable chalk water. Maybe we could just put them in the the trailer and then we could take uh, showers with them at drift events. Okay. That's what I did with the last like at the the last drift event. I was pretty stoked. <laughs> water bottle. Uh, at the last drift event, I was pretty stoked. I. Uh, had some hot waters that have been in my truck and you know once you leave water in the truck for like a couple days it gets in the sun and then it, I mean it just tastes weird and funny all that BPA. yeah all that BPA that you're you're drinking so it, it was nice at the drift event at night I actually had me like a pretty cold or a, like a warm shower water bottle McDonald's cup 32 water bottles I seriously don't know what to do with this trash can it like one day Every day, it, it like fills completely up like that, bottles. and nobody crushes them. See, so see, Ty, Ty's been being courteous lately. He's been like crushing them so that they take up less. Uh, you know, I don't know. All you guys from overseas are probably like shitting. That we're actually throwing water bottles away because we don't recycle them. Because I guess we we're, just, right we're just lazy Americans. And we don't get. They don't like in California. They'll pay you five cents a bottle. Or something. Here I, they don't don't pay I don't know what they do, but we're just, I guess we're just right. being lazy. Maybe I should go ahead and dismount all my, my drift tires too, and then take those and throw them in the pile. And I, I need to get rid of all this damn oil, because like it just, it builds up, and then people come and they change your oil, and then they're like, oh, I'm going to take the oil, here's the oil. And we're like, ah. Well, the time-lapse camera died, but uh, looks a little bit better. Got all that random paint crap, all the boxes. Got the saw bumper I'm gonna put out on the, the saw outside to let it kind of stretch out because it was kind of like folded up in the back seat. Um, yeah, put some of that stuff away. Cleaned up some of this stuff. I got my all my injectors and everything ready to, like my core injectors to send back to full force. Um, yeah, that's about it. I haven't cleaned up this much or much over here, but uh, 
was able to get that kind of cleaned up. I don't know, this, this is kind of why the shop stays this way or, or is always kind of messy because you always kind of get like a half-ass clean in and then it just goes right back to doing work. But uh, I don't know, tomorrow, David and everybody gets here, we'll kind of clean up everything and I'm gonna dismount all them tires and put all that crap away. But uh, yeah, see you guys tomorrow. Alright guys, so it is tomorrow. So uh, this is my plan for a, uh, a boost leak tester. So basically I got this little piece of aluminum right here. I got this little chunk that I cut off. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick that on there. Just draw a circle in the, probably on the outside of it. And then just weld it up. And then I have here, right here, I have a little quarter inch in NPT. Yeah. I, I, I always say that wrong and you guys get mad at me. So I have a quarter inch MPT tap, and then basically I have this, uh, this handy dandy little snap on, or not snap on, Matco tire pressure gauge. And then what I was gonna do is just pull off the tip of the hose right there, cause that's a quarter inch NPT, and just screw that in basically to the center. And then I have basically a control. I could go in, at, you know, I could add air. I could see how many PSI it's holding or not holding or, or whatever. So I don't know, we'll see. And then if, uh, if that doesn't end up working or I don't end up liking that, I'll just hook up, I'll just put in like an air gauge or I could actually hook up the air compressor to it and then I'll drill another hole in it and put a, uh, an actual air pressure gauge on it. So that's, uh, I don't know, that's kind of, that's kind of the idea. I have this, this gauge off of my old uh, pressure regulator for my, uh, my paint gun, but it's like, doesn't work anymore. It was a regulator. I thought that would be kind of cool. I was initially wanting to just hook up something like this to where I could just sit here and just kind of turn it up so I could leave it on so it's not necessarily pushing like 80 PSI in it, but I don't have to go over and like turn down the regulator all crazy over there. I could just kind of regulate it right here and kind of see how much PSI is actually going in it. And uh, But this thing sucks. So that's another option too. So I think the, the quarter inch NPT will allow me to do kind of whatever I want with it. But uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna go ahead and draw the line on here and cut it out. So I just got it all welded up and cooled down. So looks all right. A couple little lumpy spots, but uh, I mean, if I wanted to, I could I could go over it and like do like kind of a cover pass and remelt it, and make it look pretty again. But yeah. So now I'm just gonna drill one or two holes in here. I'll probably do the one offset just in case later I want to add that gauge to it. So just got the, I decided to kind of go with this way. I figured it'll just be easier so I don't have to end up threading on and off that other thing. And I'll just kind of adjust the regulator on the deal. But uh, yeah, essentially I'll just take the air hose, just plug that in, watch the PSI, turn the regulator down on the, the compressor. So this is a three inch and then basically you kind of use whatever adapter that you have. So like this is a three to a four inch. Over here I have like a three to a, a 2.75. And then I have, I think this is, this might be like a three to two and a half. So, I don't know. So for the most part, you just connect it to the front of the compressor housing. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my truck and take off the intake and pressurize it because I definitely have some sort of an issue because my truck's still making 15 pounds, pounds of boost and I, I zip tied the, the wastegate shut yesterday. So I'll show you.
All right, so I regulated the pressure down. You see, I got it hooked up right here. Normally, you wouldn't be able to do this, but I have a crankcase uh, ventilation deal, so it, it, I'm, I, if you were to do this, this would pressurize your crankcase. Just doing it right here. Normally, you'd have to go all the way to the compressor, but uh, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in and see what happens. So like I said, the, it's regulated down to 20 PSI. See if we got a leak. Well, that definitely sounds like a leak. Man, that sounds like a huge leak. Holy shit. All right, try, time to get out the soap and water. All right, so we still got the boost on there. There's a little bit of a leak around this coupler, which uh, that, that's where I'm kind of hearing it right now. But I kind of figured out what I think is the main issue. So this is one of them little chintzy plastic things that's going to my boost gauge. You can see. Yeah, the little, little plastic. So the little plastic guy going to my boost gauge, you can see it has like a nice little hole in it because it was rubbing. Um, so yeah, in here, you can see now we're holding nine pounds. I'm gonna go turn it up so it's like closer to 20. Over here. Oh, the compressor's off. We're going up a little bit. I'm just waiting for the compressor to build up to go adjust it. Yeah, it's uh, holding that much so far. Still that little bit of a leak right here, which is coming. Yeah, I should probably figure that out. Just so I don't have to listen to that. I'll pull off that little pedestal and actually put it on the compressor side. All right, so I, uh, I went ahead and I replaced this line right there going for my little boost gauge so I have a teed in right there which isn't necessarily the best thing but it's lasted probably like four or five years like that um, I think we're holding like almost 20 a little over 25 pounds of boost yeah I think uh, I think that's kind of the I guess the solution to my problem it, it was probably actually making around 20 to 25 but it uh, the boost gate just wasn't reading it because it just wasn't getting any boost to it. So, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put this thing back together. All right, it's all back connected, so uh, I guess let's take it for a rip. So this is, if you wanted to know how I zip tied my wastegate shut, I use them stainless steel zip ties that you use on like heat wrap, and uh, I use that. So just driving it now, seems like it's definitely showing more boost than it normally does, just kind of cruising. feels a lot better I uh, now that the map sensor is actually reading the proper amount of boost so it's actually giving it enough fuel versus it was probably the map sensor was probably only saying around 15 pounds too when it was actually at like 20 or so and uh, it was probably mad you know so it wasn't giving it the proper amount of fuel so now it actually feels like a lot stronger um, yeah and then I, I look just like cruising boost now Was like 27 pounds so I'm on the uh -oh. check engine light it's mad because I it's like oh you're over boosted bud so we'll start yeah <laughs> it definitely feels a lot stronger than it used to Right, guys that's gonna be it uh, for this video thank you guys for watching and uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed that quick little uh, you know boost leak tester thing definitely helped out my truck a little bit so uh, so but yeah I'm uh, pretty excited to get a trailer on it and uh, definitely gonna have a trailer on it soon when we deliver this thing to somebody in the United States so uh, you know hopefully I don't know hopefully it's not like 
hopefully somebody wins it like not in Maine or like on the tip of New York or like some crazy like 24 or, or like 30 some hour drive away but uh, if they do you know that's uh, that's what we signed up for but uh, yeah still if you guys are interested at motiontv.com yanking the interior out of it getting uh, getting all the stuff should have the wiring harness for that thing tomorrow but uh, that'll be a different video again I'll catch you guys later or tomorrow or the next day one of them but let me see you work this beautiful mind if it's right the stars align nothing can keep you from feeling